Hi booktube, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie and it's time to talk to you guys about my winter TBR. Um, so I'm trying to do things. Once again, I'm still trying to experiment and try different things with my TBR. Um, I'm probably going to talk more about that when I do my um, goals video in like in the middle of the month. I also want to do like a video where I talk about all the Christmas carol adaptations I'm familiar with, like kind of compare and contrast them, which brings me to one of the books I'm definitely going to read in December. The two books that I think will be great together are, of course, I'm going to reread Christmas Carol, and I'm also going to read Chimes by Dickens, which I don't know anything about that one. Um, that this 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 edi edition has that a Christmas Carol, the Chimes, and the Haunted Man. So I'll save the Haunted Man for next year. Um, but I thought a great book to pair with these is this one, Mister Timothy, by L Lewis Bayard, and this is actually about Tiny Tim as an adult, and he's kind of trying to escape the you know the um the pious identity he that was established for him in his in his childhood and trying to escape his you know reputation as a cripple and trying to disconnect from his the the ties between him and his benevolent benevolent uncle Scrooge so and by doing that he kind of gets mixed up in the London the London underbelly and he um joined like he teaches this woman that runs a brothel how to read he also um starts like trying to find dead bodies and the treasures that they might carry in their pockets so he's trying to go like shed his golden his golden boy persona and have a, you know, he doesn't want to be under that shadow anymore. But then, he needs to, but then he ends up having to protect this woman who might become the next victim um, of these other, these two bodies that he, what some, two of the bodies he found by the river, in the River Thames. So I thought that would be this would be this perfect because it's about Tiny Tim and what his life is like as an adult and how he's trying to escape the reputation of being the angelic Tiny Tim. Um, so I thought that would be great to read this one, and it's a known and I guess it's a New York Times notable book. Um, and of course, it's another one of those. And it is another one of those books that has kind of um, stuff in the back that are like, you know, interviews with the author and um, and questions that you can ask a book club. So I guess they're probably implying that you could use this as a book club book. Um, but yeah, I think that would be interesting to kind of read as kind of a, like a, not a retelling or imagining, but kind of a, like looking at taking one of the characters and seeing and you know deciding kind of where would they be now some of like um and actually tiny tim is probably a perfect option because you don't know a lot about any of the other any of the other kids and i mean i guess you could have looked at his at scrooge's nephew fred and see where his life ended up but i, I imagine this but this sounds like a more interesting story and it's a way you could explore Tiny Tim's character, and because unfortunately Dickens, a lot of his children characters were very pure and angelic, and like, um, like um, for instance, Oliver from Oliver Twist, and you know, um, Little Nell. They're so perfect and lovable, and they're so sweet, and it's like, you know, sometimes it's almost sickly sweet. It's almost like you know. You know, eye rolling inducing, and it's like, okay, kids are not that angelic. Kids are not that sweet and perfect. You know, even if they are have poor backgrounds, you know, 
Like, most kids would probably be a lot more like, you know, the Artful Dodger and all those other, all those other boys and hung out with. Um, and just really, it's kind of annoying when he makes his child characters jump and pat the control. Like, it almost bothers me more than the the female characters and how angelic they can be because, you know, I'm used to that with authors doing that. And, um, especially male authors and, like, for older works. But then, you know, it's more, well, this is the only author that I'm, like, not, not Lewis Bayard, but Dickens is the only author I'm, that writes a lot of that has written, like, children as main characters. And they're just so pure and perfect. It's like, kids are not like that. No matter what their background is. But anyway, so I'm definitely going to read these two this month. So I am currently trying, I am close to finishing up the novella The Mist, the first book in this collection. And um, I don't, I know a little bit, of, I know of like the ending and stuff like that of The Mist. But I thought I would read the book because I've never actually watched the miniseries. I was just told how what happens in the miniseries and how and I also know that the book ending is different the novella ending is different I, I have been told that but the video in the video the narrator did kind of give away the ending but usually in those kind of videos they you know they will warn you ahead of time there they'll be like there are spoilers ahead so it's my own fault you know I didn't have to watch it but I'm I'm lazy so and it's like I said I mean unlike um, Secret Garden, Secret Window, I've never watched the miniseries. So I was still very much, so it didn't really, Secret, like, in Secret Window, I know the plot beats and everything. I've seen the movie, but i watched the movie quite a few times because I have the movie with Johnny Depson, um, as the title character, as the main character. Um, so it's like, it kind of makes it me... I was inclined. And it's not like with, like, Lord of the Rings, where there could be a lot of stuff that is not in the movie that could be in the books. Or, like, some of, Dick and, some of Stephen King's denser novels, you know, there could be stuff that that isn't included. While with Secret Wind, it's a short story or novella. I actually think it's a novella like The Mist is. So it, there's a lot of stuff in there that, you know, it's not that long. So it's, there's not, a, probably not a lot of differences. So it's, you know, and so far when I read, I just wasn't into it because I had seen the movie. Um, and this one, I have not seen the movie adaptation. So it's like, it, I was able to, it's all very new to me. And there's three more chapters to go. And this one I'm on, um, so I'm almost done. I just kind of read it all today. I'm going to try to read it today. So, in case you don't know, The Mist is basically in, um, you know, once again, we're in Maine. You know, in Maine. And there was a storm the night before, so the power went out. Um, and a lot of, you know, so a lot of people have to go to the grocery store and buy new food and stuff. And this, this man, David, and his son, Billy, go to... The grocery store with a sort of friend. They have a rocky relationship because, um, and he leaves his wife behind. And before he left, he did notice that there was a mysterious mist in the distance. And but he dismisses it. And then what ends up happening is when they get to the grocery store with a whole bunch of other people are there shopping, the mist rolls on in, and it. And then they slowly realize that the mist might be a little bit dangerous. And that there might be some things in there, some creatures in there that can kill you. So, um, so yeah, it's so far it's really interesting. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Storm of the Century, um, Stephen King's Storm of the Century, because I know I think the Steven Spielberg's film where they're on the wa on the ocean is also called Storm of the Century, but it's in New England during the winter time and there's a big snowstorm and this they all hang out at the local like the the big barn where they all have their meetings. Kinda of think about um in Stars Hollow, the place where, you know, they have all their meetings. It's the same kind of deal. And um 
and of course, because the power, you know, the snowstorm has affected everything. They're all kind of stuck there. But instead of it being like some mon- some creatures in the you know out in the snowstorm, there is actually this demon like guy who shows up with the intention to take one of their children as um as his protege and make him like him. In terms of this big deal of how do what do we do? How we have to make this difficult decision? How do we do we sacrifice one of our kids and um, so it has its different, like, different kinds of weather, and in that one, like I said, there's, it's a male, it's a humanoid demon, or a demon that takes the form of a human, and then with this one, it's all these different creatures, like, animal-like creatures, and, um, but it does have similar vibes, like, stuck in this one place, and having to make difficult, difficult decisions, and a lot of times Stephen King does have a lot of the same types of character types in his small towns. But I still like his stories. They're so riveting and just, you know, I mean, I haven't read, I'm, of course, he's also on his author's arm. That's always everything he writes. Um, but, yeah, so there's that one. I almost bought some Stephen King today, actually. I almost bought another one, but I decided to get something different. I was trying to restrain myself and just stick to one book. This time, it's Christmas is right around the corner. And second of all, um, Trying to budget it myself, and you know, get myself a, a budget. Um, I'm also reading a little bit more of Brothers Karamazov. Only since I'm not, I tried to film this last night, but it just got too late and I was tired. And, you know. Um, but actually, it's kind of good because now I have more to say for Brothers Karamazov. A little, not much. Still haven't read a lot of it, but. Um, and this one we are were. We've been introduced to Theodore's, sorry, sorry about working that pronunciation, the father figure, his, the family patriarch, we've been introduced a little bit to his servants. Just as a modern reader, it's so frustrating seeing how the female characters are treated, you know, in this book. Like, I know that it's a different time period, and this was written a long time ago, like 1800s, so, but seeing how, um, the servants... His main servant, this man, he has a wife, and he's very much, he's like, we shouldn't be working for him anymore, we're done with this guy, and he's like, no, it's our duty, we have to stay with him, and then he's, and so it's like, and the husband, like, he's the boss, he goes his way, and his wife, you know, she's, she fights back a little bit, there's only so, but there's only so much she can do, and I just get so frustrated, because what I know so far about the character of the- Theodore, I just, I don't understand why these people are working for him. He doesn't deserve it. And duty, I think, you have to earn that. He hasn't earned it. I think there are times when he would cross a line that it would be like, you know, there's only so much they owe him. But in this guy's mind, they owe him like a lot and they should stay loyal to him. And we learn about, and this dude has a lot of kids. He's impregnating a lot of people. It's so fun that he lives in this land of denial, like, he, and he believes it, you know, he says, it's not, you know, he says it's a certain way, and he says it so much that he believes it is the way he says it is, even if it's not, um, but it straddles the line between, maybe it really isn't, maybe he's more, a lot more innocent, and, like, you kind of know in the back of your mind that he probably is guilty of all these things they say of him, but then in the back of your mind, you're like, but then you're also thinking, well, there is a possibility that he is really innocent. Although we are not, it's not like we're his perspective, so. Um, but yeah, he got this one girl pregnant. And this one woman. And he is in den- he denies that he's the father of her child. So it's like a part, and they never go, the author never you know, spells it out for you. Dostoevsky never spells it out for you. He doesn't actually say that Theodor actually, you know, had sex with this woman. They don't ever, just, he never says that happened. You can, I think it infers to the fact that that's probably what happened. He probably, like, 
have sex with her or even raped her. I, I don't know. It doesn't ever say it. You know, it's just next thing you know, she's pregnant. Um, and there were other guys there. You know, there were other there were other men that were around walking past the bed. Um, and then we have the other part I read was when Alyosha. He's the kind of more pure one, the more the more good one. He's talking to I think it's Dimitri, his oldest brother. Um, and Dimitri's kind of explaining that, you know, kind of telling why he's committed to some of the sins he has, and kind of explaining and talking about his struggle with trying to be good and moral. And he's like telling Alyosha, Alyosha, you're lucky. You know, you are a man of God. You have a, you know, you have better control. And then he's like, well, actually, no, I have dark thoughts too. Thoughts I shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, he's still a guy. I mean, he's still a human being. So it's not like he's not going to have some bad thoughts. Just because you're a person, you know, who works for the church, does not mean you're, you know, completely pious or completely, you know, you know, dismissing of sin, because even people that think that they are, they will sometimes, they get angry oftentimes at someone, at a woman that they think is a little too, you know, too much of a slut, or hoe, or whatever, too flirty, to put it nicely. Um, they will blame her, and they will say this is, it's what they think, but really, it's more that they just have no self-control. And they get angry when the woman says no. I mean, that's what happens in... Now, I'm thinking about the cartoon. I've never read the... I mean, I read... You know, I have... I attempted to read Hunchback and Extra Dom, the book. And, um... But from the anime movie, Frollo is mad when Esmeralda is, like, you know... Defends herself against him as, like, these perms and... You know, you're such a cruel man, and what what makes you think I would give myself to you? And he's mad at her, he pitches his fit, so it's like, she's so sinful, you know, it's her, or, you know, and, like, he gives her the choice of, sorry, I'm trying to, I don't want my laptop to fall off, but, um, like, in the climax, you know, he's like, it's either me, or you're gonna die. Um, but it's just, but yeah, the, like, um, so yeah, I mean, even Frank's got naughty thoughts, um, but I'm trying to read as much as I can of this soon before, you know, before my little, my little weekend is over and I have to go back to work, because I got, I got some, a few days off, like, I think, Five? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Got four days off. I got four days off. So that that was really nice. Um, the hard part of having so many days off, though, is that going back to work. Um, but anyway. So there's that. Okay, and then one more book before I start thinking along the lines of TBRs. And probably it's going to be a, like, December, you know, you know, a winter TV, a winter TBR. Um, okay, so one more book before. Um, I'm also progressing, slowly progressing in this. The Walt Lilly biography, A Triumph, The Triumph of the American Imagination by Neil Gabler. Um, so we got very little, a little bit of Walt's childhood, and I think he was from Missouri. Um, but we also get, like, we see how his struggle in animation before he became the famous, infamous Walt Disney. Um, and how there are people that kind of screwed him over, and friends that kind of, that essentially because betrayed him in the end. Um, and... We got his relationship with his wife, how they first met and fell in love. And it's kind of a cute little romance because, like, he wasn't thinking about love or anything. He was focused on his work. And he ends up 
And his brother's, I don't know if she was just his fiance at the time, but his brother Roy's wife, I think was friends with his, was friends with the future Miss Disney. Um... Sorry, I'm sorry. There's there's all these there's these dogs outside my window, um, but Lillian, what's her name? Um, she ends up she ends up working for Walt Disney. She's painting the cells of some of his animation, and over time they start spending a lot of time together and like hanging out together, and slowly they fall in love. So, um. It's it's a really sweet and really cute little little love story, little romance they had going on, and um, and now we're at the point when he's um when he's working on he's creating making, and um, the struggle with that and just um. So it's just, it's very interesting, very fascinating seeing the early days of Mickey Mouse and, and, you know, the struggles that Walt goes through and, you know, he's not a perfect guy. He can be a jerk sometimes. Um, but I just, I love learning about this kind of stuff because it's so interesting to see these people because just... I think it's just the desire for us to be like, these people, are they human like us? Are they, you know, are they different? Are they better than us? Or maybe they, are they, you know, just wanting to understand them, wanting to connect with them and find out if they're different from us or if they are similar to us, just making, maybe just make more money <laughs> and are on TV all the time. But, um, would have loved to be Walt Disney. He was one of these people I would love to have met. But, um, but I get the impression he was very shy, though. I get the, I'm guessing he was a very shy man. Very reserved. So I'm reading that one. Okay, so, um, and I'll probably, in Skeleton Crew, I'll probably read a few more, maybe three, two or three more from the Skeleton Crew collection. Okay, um, so let's see. Well, first let me go ahead and tell you what I ended up getting at Books and Land today, along with a bookmark. I also, I, I decided to, I was trying to pick a book that was not on my Amazon wish list, and I decided to go ahead and get Dune, which I've already had this book, and I don't know if I've ever, I probably showed it to you guys, but, um, I had a mass, mar again, another situation where I had the mass market, but then I kind of lost interest at that point. Now the interest has come back since the movie came out, and I'm watching people's videos who are talking about this book, like Books with Brittany, um, is currently reading that, I'm currently reading this one, and actually this did inspire me, just, like literally just now, to maybe have a month where I read, where I focus on my series, like maybe read the first book, in the, you know, the first or the next book in a series, because I have quite a few series where I get to read the next I mean, I don't know if I'm going to devote a whole month to it or each month pick a different book from a series to read. Because, like, um, you know, now i got to read. Um, I have a lot of series that I bought. And um, series that, like, i got to read. This one. Um, although I feel like I need to read this one now. This actually probably should be an op option for this month. Although not that um the series I don't have to worry about the series because even if season two has started I got I mean I've read a lot of elves already and I've read Thomas and I've read up to Baptism of Fire um so now I gotta read this one so um I might be okay you know I don't have to read this one this month but I would kind of like to read this one. So then, this is another series that I gotta read. Just I gotta read this book as well. Um, let's see, what is that one? What? Um, something else I need to read. 
This is another one that I gotta read. Uh, I have Way of Kings. Um, the first book in Mistborn Second Era that I gotta start. Um, the Dragon Reborn. I gotta start my reading of Clash of Kings. Um, this one. I have, I have a lot. So let me go ahead and show you one of the ones that, like, this is another series I got. I put this book off because, I mean, I loved Star of the Forest. So this is an, um, this is the second book in the series. I gotta get this, and I've got this book for a while, for years now. So it was a thrift books purchase, actually, which it was actually before I joined thrift books. It was like, I had on Amazon and I realized there was only one left on Amazon, so my mom, you know, I was talking to my mom about it. I was like, well, if you're worried that you won't get it or it will disappear before you get it, go in and buy it. So I bought it. Um, but this is about the seven, a fam, the family of the seven, this family of the seven waters, wa waters, and each book kind of focuses on the next generation, the next daughter, the daughter of the next generation. Um, this focuses on the granddaughter of Sorka, Sorsha, who was the first, the girl and the main character and daughter of the forest. It's, this one focuses on her, her daughter, her granddaughter. Um, and I think there's a bit of a, Oh no, it's her daughter. It is her daughter. Um, but so it's a bit of a she needs to find her true love, and people might not approve of that because he's, you know, of a different. Oh, I just found my sweater. So I'm guessing her true love is going to be something that her mother and father don't approve of. Um, so there's a lot of series that I've got to read. So it's just, it's so hard to make a decision on what I want to focus on this month. So I have to organize these so I can determine what to focus on, what I want to focus on. Um, and you guys have seen a lot of these already in a video that um, I said I got this one. You guys know I got this one, and I might read. I'm thinking about reading this one this month. The only good endings. Um, um I'm thinking about like like two cups of coffee, and I'm still like so tired. I, mean, I know it's my own fault because I don't go to bed and even I, I try to, but then I get distracted and I'm just like, it's hard to break the habit, <laughs> but it's my own fault. I need, to, I need to work out those habits. I'm trying to at least get them up by 10, but then I always constantly make excuses. And, um, but I might read this one this month. Like I have a few books here that are a little more con unconventional for winter time. Um, like they're more, or I should say, more like Christmas time. Um, so I might read this. One. I'm thinking about this one as well. Let's see, so like um, another one that's a little, a couple more than our little. I'm like, I actually have this whole pile right here that's of stories that probably wouldn't really fit the season or the holiday. So um, I can't remember who it was that I was watching their vlog of them reading this. And I had read it before, but I haven't when you reread it. And that's Salem's Lot, which is Stephen King's take on... Um, I might not read it for... Because I'm already reading some some of the novels from The Mist. I might save this for like January or February. Maybe February for Jesus. Valentine's month. Month of Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, I might do that. I might save this for February, so I might save this one for February. 
But this is his his take on the vampire genre. And he basically begs the question of, when if Dracula, when Dracula in suburbia, which I actually today one of the one of my choices was actually um this woman the Southern Southern Book Club Southern Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying the Vampires. I almost bought that one. I was tempted to buy it, but um I didn't. So maybe next time. This is so hard when you have to make your you know you're trying to restrict yourself to one book. You know, and um, I'm also trying to stick to a budget. And I mean, like I said, Christmas is coming up. You know, I have a lot of books on my Christmas wish list. Um, it's gonna be very hard to make a decision right now. But as you saw, I chose Dune. So I read this before. It's like this guy, um, Ben Mears. He's a writer, and when he was a kid, something happened at this local mansion that was supposedly haunted or like something terrible happened in the at the mansion while he was hiding in the house and so and eventually he leaves town grows up you know has his life away from Jerusalem's lot the town and he comes back probably with the intention to write a story I don't remember but um, write another novel using the town as inspiration and the house is still kind of a shadow looming over the town and there might be bam vampire a vampire might have bought it this time and it might have bought the town because all these weird things start happening people are starting to get sick you know and people are starting to people that supposedly die they're being seen coming back but they're different they're you know they're more monstrous so um yeah i saw someone reading this um, I can't remember who was doing, I wish I knew who it was doing the, like, the blog while reading this one. So, I'm thinking about this one. And then the other one, um, is, The Haunting of Ashburn House. Which, I know in the UK, the tradition, Christmas, originally, there was a time for telling ghost stories. So I thought, you know, I was thinking about doing a, reading a couple books in December that are more spooky and ghosts and about ghosts and stuff. Um, now one of the other ones I feel like I need to read in December um, is another one that I feel like I need to read in December that's kind of more more ghosty, more not exactly ghosty, but um, is kind of has take kind of has to do with Christmas. Is Nos Four A Two, which is also vampire related, or he's sort of a vampire, and um, the bad guy, the antagonist, will kidnap children that he feels like they're not treating being treated fairly by their parents. Their parents are being mean to them, so he takes the children, turns them in, into monsters. And with promises to take them to Christmas land where they can live for play forever. Um, so unfortunately I ended up at some point I got this book but well I have it in my lunch bag at work. So it's a little it's not in the best condition. Um I have intended to buy another copy of it, but that's okay. It's still readable. You know, it's not terrible. So I'm thinking about this is the number one I'm thinking about reading. Let me put two on here. Um, I have to come back to this one, so it might, this might be an option for this month as well. That's probably more of a definite option, because like I said, it takes place during Christmas time. Or, or actually it doesn't, but it's the, the bad guy kind of takes the kids to Christmas land. Um, oh, and there's also our protagonist is this young girl named, what's her name? Victoria McQueen, they call her Vic, and she has this uncanny ability to find things. And she runs into our antagonist, and was the one that got away. So now he is hunting her down. He wants to hunt her down and punish her for doing for getting away from him. So like I said, that one it might be indefinite. Okay, so 
Next, like I said, this one is the, the Spawn of Lilith. Not a ghost or anything, but I had been meaning to read it for, you know, because I don't want to make the same mistake of buying books from the dollar store and then regretting them. You know, or it's like, not regretting it, but just losing interest. This is one of the ones I want to try. Um, and just to, like, see, um, just try it out. Because I, I, I don't want, I just, like I said, I make a, you know, I'm thinking because the dollar store does have some books. I go there, I'm like, I just want to get one, one book. Because it's only a dollar. Of course, I ended up getting more than one book. But I was like, it's only a dollar, so it's not that big of a deal. But I still feel bad because I got it and I didn't, you know, if I'm not liking it, it's like saying I didn't really need to get it. I just got it because it was there. And because it was cheap. So it's like I want to at least try it out. And it is blurbed by Charlene Harris. In case you don't know, she's the author of the book version of True Blood. The actual novels. Which, um, so yeah, I'm going to try it out. So I might read it in December. I might not. I mean, I feel like I should try it sooner rather than later. So maybe I should read it in December. Um... So, other than that one, I'm going, other than the Walt Disney bio, I'm kind of going back and forth with my nonfiction. There's, I did, I was tempting, thinking about the um, PSQR, I think that's what it, the History of Ancient Rome. I have thought about reading that. I didn't get it off my shelf. I don't have it here in these piles. But I do have the other nonfiction I have is... The Republic and Other Works, um, translated by, um, by B. Jowett, Jowett, it's, where's the official Oscar here, Plato, but Play, originally written by Plato, it has the Republic in it, you know, then obviously going by the title, and also has Symposium, Primates, I don't know if you, but you throw a Informate, you know, essays or, you know, um, Apology, Socrates at his trial, Crato, Socrates in prison, and Phaedo, the death of Socrates, which, Phaedo, I wonder where that is, because there was a, there was actually a Charmed episode, the original Charmed, where, um, a friend of their grandmother's, her little friend group, her little coven, wants to be young again because they're, they're older ladies. They were friends with the, um, the Charmed One's grandmother, Penny Hollowell. And they want to be young again, so they make a deal with this demon, and the demon is called Crato. Um, and he will make them young again, but he has to, um, it's make, basically like making a deal with the devil. And they also have to, like, they have to get skin some dead bodies and use them to make his body so he can come back. So he'll, like, bodies and call it to put this certain demonic soul in um so i'm wondering if that was inspired by that but like i said i don't know the deal with crito who that is um or why like why it's called that i know it has to do with socrates so i don't know if there's any connection there any inspiration there but one day i'll find out so that's the republic i just know philosophy class i just never finished it i decided to I audited it, and then eventually I dropped it because I wasn't doing well in it. Like, I like the idea of philosophy, but it's just the, the sitting there in a classroom when I'm tired is not as fun. So I'm going to try this. I'm a little bit more mature person, I can and I can read this whenever I want. So I'm going to try this. So I might read this December, and um, or actually, probably not December because I want to focus get a lot more done at the Walt Disney biography. So I might read this, and then there's the history of ancient Rome. I might dive into that too. Okay, so this next one is one that I mean, it says winter right in the title, and um, and that is Winter's Tale by Mark Hilton, and it is a movie. It did become a movie, so I'm wondering if the movie with Colin Farrell and 
God form a beautiful mind. I'm pursuing it every day. I can't think of his name. I'm drawing a blank here. So I'm tired. So I cannot remember the actors. This actor, Russell Crowe. So I'm wondering if this is the movie with, if that was the one that this book is based on. If it was that movie is what the book that um is what this is. Where he falls in love with a woman. Um, I think he's immortal himself. But it is winter's tossing. That's something that I probably should start. You know, I should read in the winter time because it says winter in it. This one may be again another one that should be February. Um It has a discarded stamp, so I'm wondering if this used to be a library book, but then the library gave it to the um, to the bookshop, the Rose House, you know, the Rose House, because it's a and it's stamped discarded, or maybe it was an extra copy that they didn't need. Um, I wonder if these are like the stickers that you aren't bothered by, because I mean, in this case, it's not that huge of a deal. Because like it's not probably not covering much and it's not covering the words and all the people the, the people most of the most of the cover is most of the images on the cover are done here and there's not much to look at so this one wouldn't bother me this one personally doesn't bother me I don't know if it will bother anyone else because I know a lot of people cannot stand those fake stickers um so yeah I'm wondering if this was a library book because it's a discarded stamp and maybe just they just decided to Um, and they decided they're no longer. Yeah, it must have been a library book because it also has the um, it has the slot where they put the the little that card that they stamp, and then it has um, blackened that says like it has the the library um, the address of whatever the library came from. I don't know if it was this library or, or maybe the library in somebody in Southern Town. But, um, yeah, so I'm glad I got it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that this would be great to read in the wintertime. It would be, like, perfect because it has winter on it. I also thought that um, this also would be a great read to read called The Wolf. Um... And this is also a series, I believe, or a, or a duology, possibly. Um, I think, you know, for some reason, I think it might have something to do with Vikings. But for some reason, like, the cover made me think of it would be a good... Um, when I think of wolves, I think of winter time. So this could be a good option for, like, a winter read. Um, oh, it has... Paul Hawthorne, I don't know who that is, but dark conspiracies, larger than life characters, tense battles, a rousing cross between the Magnificent Seven and Game of Thrones. I have such mixed opinions about that because I feel like, you know, like everybody else who is bothered by that when they compare it to other books, you have ex you end up having these expectations for it to be like something else, that like the book that it's said to be like. And it ends up not being exactly that book. I mean, granted, it, has to be, it doesn't have to be a perfect carbon copy. But, you know, there's as these books are they're said to be, oh, the next Game of Thrones or the next Harry Potter or the next Twilight, the next Hunger Games, and it ends up not, it's, it's not. Like, I think it puts too much pressure on the book when it's, like, it's said, oh, it's the next Hunger Games. You know, it's, it's just too much pressure on the book. You know, too many, too high expectations. So I feel like this would be perfect for a wintry read as well. Because, like, yeah, I, think, I just think of wolves. And this looks like a wolf, a wolf mark. So. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cut out these and organize them and figure, like, um, this will be February books and this will be, you know, um, and then this one, I bought this one. This was another one where I bought it. It's not my usual 
put the book to read, but with the roast office, they kind of allows me to explore other books. You know, not just because of, you know, for like two reasons. One, it doesn't have the great, it doesn't have an ideal selection independent necessarily on my favorite types of books to read. And also, it's not the prices, like the most expensive book is $5, possibly 6 You know, so, I mean, compare that to like Books a Million or Barnes & Noble or even, you know, Amazon for that matter. So, you know, it's just not always the best selection. So, um, this is another one that I kept looking at every time I went there and finally decided to get it. The Crimson Petal in the Woods. And for some reason, because the name, you know, I was thinking this was a woman, Michelle Ma Ma Faber. But it's actually, I think that's the French pronunciation for Michael. Because it is, I found it, it was an off the male author. So, um, and I think it's about this prostitute named Sugar. And yeah, um, in the Victorian era of London, and she wants, and obviously she wants a better life, um, and she tries to move up in the world. Yeah, that's how I figured, <laughs> because in the, the author, the picture of the author is on the back, so it's clearly a guy. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking, this is the one I'm thinking about um, as well. And of course, I have two other historical fiction, some other historical fictions that I'm thinking about. Like, I think I had started the book yet. The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. Um, it's a more biblical, and I thought about reading this one with Paradise Lost um, by Milton. So actually, I might, I might do that. I might consider doing that. Um, the Franciscans, it's about the Franciscans, and um, there's, they are suspected of heresy, heresy and this this guy, Brother William, decides to show up and investigate. Um, but there's these weird deaths going on, so he kind of becomes a bit of a detective. Um, and I know this is, you know, this book, I kind of associate this one with Jennifer Brooks. I know she loves Italian, Italian history and stuff. And I don't know, this is one of the ones, I don't know if she said she read this book or was thinking about reading it. Um. Maybe she had and she just hasn't picked it up yet. So I had bought it because I was, I'm trying, once again, like the thing about the Rose Elvis is that I can, it allows me to try different types of books that I normally wouldn't read that aren't like fantasy. <laughs> um, so I picked up this one. So this might be a winter, this might be an option that I'm going to read in this month. And then another one I think that would be great for February, I don't know why. I just feel like it fit, you know, February is, um, Blood and Beauty. It's another no a novel about the Borgias, which is another group of that, you know, fa the famous family. And again, Jennifer Brooks, you definitely associate her with the Borgias. Um, and I've heard about them and I know there's my friend, Terry from Florida is loves what has watched it loves the show, the Borgias. She's a big fan, and um, so I thought I would try. I, this is another situation where I saw and I was like, you know, I'm gonna try it. So I think this will be another one that will be. For some reason, I feel like February is the time to read this. Um, but I mean, I should. Maybe you should start rather, rather sooner than later. But, um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is after I'm done showing you all the books, I'm going to go through them and div divvy them up. So those are my historical fictions that I'm thinking about, um, although I'm sure there's more. So this is a book that I borrowed from my sister, um, and that is Song of Solomon. So I decided because, like, everyone is familiar with Beloved. 
and I decided to read, I wanted to read one of her, one of um, Toni Morrison's books that's not as popular, not as well known, and that, um, and that is Song of Solomon. Um, and this, our main character is born on the day this eccentric member of their community falls off a building and kills himself. Um, and this, this young man spends his whole life wanting to try to actually fly, um, and that's, it's basically a coming of age story, so like I said, I thought I would be more interested in this one than, I mean, I'm sure I'll be, I'll like Beloved, but I'm gonna, um, I want to try something, a book of hers that's not as well known, so. Um, and I need to read at least one of her, one of the books, you know, that I like. I mean, her book, but one of my sister's books I thought of. Um, I was almost going to return her copy of House of Mirth and give it to her while they were leaving, but I decided, you know, let me make sure I have other books to return to her before I give her that one. Um, and then when she, next time we see her, and actually I probably should read this, in, this is probably something I should read in December, so that maybe I can at least have two books to bring with me when we go see her in New York, in, on New Year's, because that's the plan we're going to see arranged for New Year's get-together. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get the time off, but I probably will, because as long as I ask up enough in advance, and I feel like New Year's is not as huge of a deal. I mean, we will work in a grocery store, of course, we'll get a lot of business by New Year's, right before New Year's, but I feel like it's not as big of a deal as, like, Christmas and Thanksgiving, as far as food goes, so I think, and as long as I ask, and usually, because I ask off far enough in advance, then I usually get it, so I probably will get it, get the time off, but, um... Yeah, I want to at least get two books under my belt. I like, well, actually, the other one, like I said, I don't need to read it because I have, I bought my own copy of it so I can give it, so it's more like I, I want, I have one book of hers and I want to give it under my belt so I can give it back to her. But I'll be giving her back too when we go and visit. Um, yeah, so this one is a definite, like, December read. Um... Okay, and then, okay, now we have, okay, so this next, I'm a little conflicted, I mean, so, um, so this is one of the situations where I don't know which Wilkes Collins book I want to read, because it's one of those where, like, I always feel like I want to try the books by an author that aren't as well known. Like, like I said, Song of Solomon, that's why I picked that one, because she does have, my sister has Beloved, but I was like, you know, I want to pick, I've heard so much about Song of Beloved, so I'm going to pick one I haven't heard a lot about. So it's kind of a similar situation, except they're, you know, I have, I just got this one from Thrift Books. Um, I purchased this one, so it's like, um, it's one of the more popular ones. Again, Jennifer Brooks, this is one of her, her favorite Wilkie Collins. Um, but then I also have Armadale, which I honestly have started to read. Um, and, it's definitely, and it's one of these situations where I definitely need to, like, read a good chunk of it. You know, sooner rather than later. Just, like, you know, sit down and read it for a good while. And, like, read a lot. Like, read more than a couple pages. Um, so it's like, do I, and this one isn't as well known, isn't as popular. Um, so it's like, do I read this one or do I read this one? And I feel like, even though I've tried it before, I feel like with authors, you probably don't want to read two books by them at the same time. You know, so, especially, you know, classic authors that are really, that, that are often really best in their life. So, um, trying to decide between these two. Um, which, in case you don't know, this is Armadale. Basically, you have two guys that have the same name. 
and you gotta find out the mystery on why they have the same name, something along those lines. And then, well, will he pawn for this guy? Um, the woman in white, he sees this woman all in white has escaped, you know, uh, wandering around. It turns out he finds out from her sis, his sis, her sister, that she is a, she's an escaped patient from her own asylum. Um, and just stay away from her. So it's like, is she crazy or is she not crazy? So these are the two Wilkie Pons books. Um, I almost feel like I should read this one. And then maybe read this one in January or February. Like, but I feel like I should get to this one. Because I've already started this one. <sighs> so there's those two. And then... The other author where I have multiple books by them that I want to pick up is Dickens. You saw the two Christmas ones by him, but there's also our mutual friend. Um, this is Katie from Books and Things favorite Dickens novel. And, oh no, 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 oh, sorry, not this one. This is Dombey and Son. Our mutual friend is the one that I've been reading. This is Dombey and Son. And about this woman who is a Dombey. It's about Dombey's daughter and how, like, he wanted a son and thinks she's not good enough because she's a woman, because she's a girl, and she, you know, it kind of dismisses her. Um, I don't know if he actually... Yeah, his he does have a son. And... It's really sad because he doesn't have a mom. I'm reading the back of this. Um, it kind of, you know what? It makes me kind of think of um, hard times where the father was very hard on his children, especially his daughter. Except, you know, he didn't always he didn't dismiss his daughter. He just married her off, tried to marry her off to someone he approved of. Um, so... This is another one that I want to read, but I did start with Our Mutual Friend too. And see, this is what happens. Like, I buy books from either Birth Books or from a bookstore or whatever. And I'm like, I had already started some of them, but I haven't progressed. And then I'm like, well, I actually want to read the books I just bought as well. And so it's just. Yeah, so. And then the, some of the other classics. Um. Are you have I need to read Northanger Abbey, which I almost read this in October for October and I never got around to it. It's the other I think it's the only Dick Dick um Austin book other than her Juvenalia or, you know, um Lady Susan, um, which is her Episcopalary novel. So really there's been like there's this is there's others that I haven't read yet. There's one more and then her juvenile that I haven't read. So, um, so I need to get this one done in November. I might, again, I might save this one for February. Because, you know, I associate Jane Austen with February. Because <laughs> a lot of her books have romance in them, so. That might be a February read. And then we have, so, the collected works of Oscar Wilde. So this one I got last Christmas, um, from one of my aunts. Because my mom, you know, um. And it was actually one of these things where, like, she, um, bought the, like, when we went to Barnes & Noble, that's really far away from here, we went up to, this, I think it was in Fayetteville, um, we went up there, we checked out the Barnes & Noble, which I love, that Barnes & Noble was huge, it was, like, two floors, I think, um, which I wish Books and Money was, like, that big, um, and I can tell a bunch of books like this as options in, in this, in the Barnes & Noble edition, the collector's edition, um, Barnes & Noble classics. And, you know, when my mom, my mom had me take a picture and just show it to my aunt. So, um, and she bought me quite a few of these, you know, all the ones I took a picture of. So there's this one, The Collected Works of Oscar Wilde, which does not have the picture of Dorian Gray, but that's fine. I have a copy of Dorian Gray. But, um, this is other ones, his novellas, his essays, his poems, um, 
So, like, it's short stories, so, I mean, it's short, his shorter works. So, I thought, you know, like what I did with Skeleton Crew, where I look, took a look at the table of contents and kind of separated them a little bit into sections. So, I think I might do that with this one. Although, it kind of is separated into sections. Um... But this one also, one of, it has the one that I've heard of, the only one I'm familiar with and I've heard a lot about is The Canterville Ghost. I've heard a lot about that. Um, but that's it. So I'm going to read that. And then, um, I don't know when I'm going to read that one. And then the other classic is Valette, Under Our Duties. So this is the next Bronte I want to read this week on the Kindle. Um, this is about Lucy Snow. She leaves her family to become a governess in the town of Valette in, um, in France. And like with Jane Eyre, there's a lot of focus on isolation and loneliness. And she has to deal with these unruly kids as a teacher. And then um, there's a bit of a romance. In this one. So I figured I'd go ahead and read this one. And I'm hoping to get the Ten and Water Hall for Christmas this year. So it's on my list, the, the cloth bound edition of it. So I don't know if I'll get it or not, but it is on there, so. Okay, so next the other Dickens classic that I'm thinking about is now this is a reread, and that is Oliver Twist. Um, I, again, for some reason, I associate this with Christmas and winter time, even though un it's not like, you know, it's not like a Christmas carol or the Haunted Man or Chimes, where it's a Christmas story. It's actually just this orphan boy named Oliver, and he, um, gets mixed up with the wrong people, and, you know, a bunch of thieves, and they won't let him go so easily. Um, he is taken in by a rich guy who wants to adopt him. And it's just that kid never catches a break. But he's also incredibly annoying because he's so jolly and perfect. And it's just, it's a very annoying book at times. So, and there's an introduction to Philip Pullman, the guy who wrote um, his Dark Materials. So I want to read, so yeah, so I'm tempted to read this one as well. Um, for the summer. Because like I said, for some reason I associate this with the Christmas time. That's the other Dickens I'm thinking about. Um, well, you know what I'm going to do? Because this is kind of going to be, this is a long video. What I might do is a two-part of this video where I divvy up into um, showing this, what I'm doing right now, and then the next video will be like showing me organizing the two, these books. Because unfortunately I don't know how to edit my videos so I can, you know, have people though, so that you can transition from, like, in the whole, when people do the try a chapter tag, so, like, you know, go off and try a chapter, but the video doesn't stop, it just transitions into the next part where they've read the chapter and everything and they're talking about the book. I don't know how to do that kind of stuff, so. Um... A few more classics. We have our ones that I've started and haven't finished. We have um, Lady Audley Secrets, which is a story about you know this this guy marries this gentleman marries this woman who's close to his daughter's enemies, and she has a bit of a secret going on, and um. And his nephew suspects, kind of has his suspicions about him, thinks it has to do with his friend's murder. Um, so, yes, I'm reading that as well. So, um, for the other option, like, I had already started this one. Along with this one, um, The Mysteries of Udolpho, and I was going to read it for October, but that kind of fell through. Because I was also trying to have a kind of Dracula-inspired um, theme. So, um, 
this one is a woman, her father has just died, so she's sent to live with her aunt, her rich aunt, and her aunt um, has just remarried this rich count, and despite the fact that her aunt had promised her she could marry the guy, she, this guy that she had fallen over that her and her father met when they were traveling to return to, to see his sister, his, her father's sister, um, she, when her aunt remarried, the guy, the Italian count, they changed their mind and decided to take their, her, take her to, um, to a villa in Italy where they live and try to arrange a more suitable match, a match that they approve of. And this is a bit of a gothic mystery, and I'm guessing the guy isn't going to be the guy they try to match with, it's not going to be that great. <laughs> um... So, this is another one that I've started as well. I'm starting one off that, because I'm thinking about reading this as well. Soon. Sooner rather than later, as well. I don't know when that will be. But like I said, I'm thinking about reading another one for sure. Just for sure. And getting back into it. Um, and then we have this bitch on a one that I've had for years. They keep saying I'm going to read this author's work. It's like two of his series. That's Kevin, Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth, um, and he's still working on this series, and I've been meaning to do this, read this one for a while, um, and I keep attempting it to start it, and, like, first it was like, oh, I'm gonna change my mouse back it over to a big, large paperback, and I did, obviously, but I still haven't picked it up, so it's kind of a heavy book. I mean, print's actually kind of big. I mean, it's like, it's not minuscule. Some, sometimes even these books the size can still have small print. Um, like I said, all I know is that there, it's a building of this cathedral. But I've been told, I've heard from people who know this, when they talk about this book, that it's a lot more than just that. And I know that, um, what's her name? Haley, Haley in the Bookland of lo loves this book, so. And it's funny, and it kind of surprised me because, like, I see what, you know, going by the books she reads, I'm, I'm surprised that she this was one of her favorite books, but. And I think it was her. I mean, I know she said about this one, and she said about his other Paul and Giants, but I think that was one of the ones that she was meaning to read, but hasn't come around to it. I could be totally wrong in getting this mixed up. But, um. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's not this book. It's not this book. It's not this book. It's not this book. Not a picture of Richard Evans, but I'm going to try hard to. Like a sketch of the cathedral for to separate the different parts of the story. So, I mean, we need to read this one as well. So, um, and because a lot of these books are big books, they're going to take me a while. That's one part of the reason why my goal is going to be a little different in 2022. Okay, there's that one as well. And then a few more. Okay, so first, this is one, that, again, just like with Pillars of the Earth and a few others, I started reading the Mass Market, but then I realized I don't like Mass Market this much. I prefer this size book. So, um,. This is um, this is basically takes place during the Napoleonic Wars, I think, and it's the idea of what if there was what if magic was real and basically what if it has come back to the world and you have these two magicians who are supposedly the last of their kind and they tried to bring magic back, um, and one is very young and the other one is older and more traditional and so there's a bit of a rivalry between them as well since there is that one um and again i've read a little bit of it but i've been meaning to get to this one for a while so get back to this one for a while and i talked about reading in the winter time as well so um there's that one as well and then we have this one <coughs> <coughs> this one i st <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So this one I started, but it's a chunker of a book as well, and then 
and writing The Witching Hour, the first book in the May for Witches trilogy. Um, and I have been meaning to get, and this is one of those things where I attempted to try once before and now I want to try and give her another shot. So I was saying I started reading them. And I mean, like I said, my, my thing was that I liked her writing, but at the time I wasn't sure if I liked the direction the story was going. And I know the story obviously hasn't changed, but I have. I've changed as a reader, so I'm going to try it again and just look at the story objectively. Um, and I, so far, I remember this stuff. Um, like, I remember the character Michael and him having this power over this psychometry. Uh, basically, the power to touch objects. And you see visions of how the object was used, when it was la who it, the last owner was, and stuff like that. Um, and it's really sad because that means he can't touch anything. He has to wear gloves all the time. And then you have, of course, the Mayfair and witches themselves. You have Deidre, um, who is kind of an in a catatonic state. Then you have her daughter, who comes across Michael's path. Crosses Michael's path. And she is a, um, a doctor, I believe. And... Um, and then you have the Talamasca, which is these people have been obsessed with the Mayfair Witches and have recorded histories of them and their, um, and trying to understand them. And then they know they, and there's this guy, this demon, like, guy that looks like a man constantly stalking them and whispering in their ears. And, um. He might be the devil in disguise. So, and now he might be after the daughter, um, Deidre's daughter. So, I'm on page 53. I stopped at page 53 last time I picked it up. So, again, you know, it's a big book. So, that's why I'm just going to have it all day. And my last stack of books is almost done. So I want to finish reading A Magic Friend, which you guys know I got this from the library, and then it was because it's a long book, I decided I needed to just buy it, because I was still interested. I still was liking it, but it's just, it would take me a long time to read, so. And the problem with libraries is that I end up neglecting all my own books. So, um, you have this mother and son have escaped her abusive I don't know if she's married to him or not. Um, and her abusive husband, it's her second husband too. And because her first husband had died. And she ends up, she and her um, son escape this suburban area. And then one day her son, Christopher, gets lost in the woods for six days. And the police finally find him. But he is a different boy. He's a lot smarter, he knows things, the voice, this little um, voice in his head is constantly whispering and helping him out. And he considers this voice his imaginary friend. And he says that his imaginary friend saved his life and everything. And the only request his imaginary friend has is if he builds a tree house before Christmas. Um, and this actually kind of made me think of um, it actually kind of made me think of um, a book I just read. Um, where is it? Where is it? The Ghost Tree a little bit. You know, with a kid that is being haunted, being haunted potentially, potentially haunted. Um, no. And there is, our main character in Ghost Tree has a little brother that's very smart and kind of knows things. He's not smart like Christopher, but he does know things. I mean, he acts more like a kid than Christopher does. Um, no, although Christopher acts like a kid, too. It's just he is pretty smart for a kid his age. But, um, so I do remember what chapter I'm going on. It's on chapter 30, 44, so I'm going to pick up where I left off with that one. And I have a few more books. I think three more. Actually, no, four more. So there's also, I want to, this is another one I get, want to get back into with Discovery Witches. Again, this might be a February read. Um, 
it's the first book in a tr I don't think it's a trilogy anymore. I think it's a quartet or a song or whatever you call it, a four book series. Um, so in this one, you have this woman, um, Diana Bishop. She is part of a coven of witches, but she's trying to kind of escape her witchy past and doesn't want to be a witch. She ends up going to Oxford and gets a job there as a teacher. And, um, well, she's, and she comes across a manuscript that has some interesting information that has both vampires and witches very intrigued and they are like obsessed with it and are very much fascinated by it. Um, and so she's constantly being chased because they think she knows where the manuscript is. And then you have um, this other teacher in the school, this guy named, this biology teacher who's a vampire named Matthew Claremont. And Matthew is fascinated by Diana and slowly falls in love with her. So the relationship between Matthew and Diana kind of is compared to Twilight, that well, that whole story. But it comes up, but to me, what I've read so far is it's more mature than Twilight because, of course, we're dealing with those in to professors and college students, and there's so much more at stake. Um, it's not just, ooh, she's a snack, you know, let's eat her, you know, it's, I think it's more than that, she actually has something, some information that they are interested in, so, um, yeah, there. So yeah, and I've I've enjoyed it so far. Again, it's not a story I got from the library to try it out, and then I realized it's kind of long, and because I was really enjoying it, so I decided to just buy myself a copy. Okay, I got three more books to go, and then I gotta call my grandma back because she just called me, returned my call from earlier. Okay, so the last three books are okay. The one one of them is a book I wanted to read during my kind of Dracula themed. Um, reading and that is the historian so again I had a hardback copy of it and so it's not a mouse writer it's actually hardback originally and I finally saw the story and decided you know what I'm gonna go buy this paperback so um, and I actually got this one saw this one at um, the Black Castle books so I went ahead and grabbed it it's the story in by Elizabeth Costova and it kind of seems like the possibility of Dracula being real and that maybe he's still alive. Um, and this father and daughter both kind of get mixed up in it all and trying to find out. So I want to read this is another one. And I also was going to read it for Dark Academia, like transitioning to Dark Academia. I read Bond the Bat from out the window, that whole theme. So I'm still thinking about reading this one. And then last and not okay, so two more books and then I'm done. And then like I said, I'll do another another part of this. So this is this next one is one that I probably should put top of my list. That is The Physician by Noah Gordon. So this is essentially about this man who wants to be a physician, but he has to but when he he wants to go to school in um And um, this medical school in Persia, but they're not big on the Christians. So he says he claims he is um, he's Jewish, just so he can attend this physician school. And like I said, I really like it so far. What I've read so far, what I remember, and I want to keep going with it. So I feel like this should be another one of those priorities. And then last but not least, and the last book also is another book that I got from the library, and I originally borrowed from the library and then decided I wanted to buy it, and that is The Luminaries. And I just figured it was also a wintry read, I don't know why, but um, I don't really know, a lot. I don't remember a lot about it, I just know that it takes place in New Zealand, and it takes place during the gold rush. So these people are going to find treasure in, in New Zealand, find gold in New Zealand. 
And I think it's historical fiction. I want to say there's fantasy elements to it, but I don't know. So this just felt like a very wintry read as well. So I'm going to read this one too. So that is all the books I'm thinking about this winter, and a lot of them you've probably seen before. Um, these are basically all the books I'm going to read this winter, and you, a lot of them you've seen, you've probably seen before. So I'm going to do a part two to this and organize them a little bit better. I feel like I should have done that before, but got a little distracted and I wanted to get this film, this one, in. So I'm going to film another one after I talk to my grandma, or at least organize my books for her. So I'll see what, if it's dark, how dark it is. Um, or how dinner is going and all that. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification below. And be prepared for part two soon. All right. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your evening. Bye.